Hey guys, Kirill here with Charismo Design. Today we'll be installing a McLaren 720S Charismo steering wheel. Watch this video if you're trying to do it yourself and need a couple of hints and tricks on how to do it easier. Oh, and by the way, if you have a McLaren GT, it's the same steering wheel and same installation process. So you can watch this video to do that as well. So before you get started, make sure you have these four simple tools ready. This is all you will need for the install of the steering wheel. It's a flathead screwdriver, a T55 Torx bit, a 10 mil socket, and an Allen key that's small enough to fit in the side of the steering wheel. So we're gonna begin by disconnecting the battery as we do in every installation. Just for safety's sake, you will always wanna disconnect your battery. And in this case, in the 720S, that's located in your front. Here's your battery. Behind this box, we want to unscrew these two with a flathead screwdriver. These should pop right out, and then this panel, you can just pop it off. Here we go. Behind here, you'll find your battery. You want to grab a 10 mil wrench and just disconnect your negative terminal. The positive one's hidden, so we're going for this one. Okay, your battery is now disconnected. If you want to, for safety's sake, <laughs> if you want to, for safety's sake, you can pump your brake a couple of times just to make sure no residual currents are remaining, and then you can get started with your install. So, it's easier to actually show what, how to remove the airbag on a steering wheel that's already off the car. So, we're going to use the Charisma steering wheel to demonstrate it. Um, on the steering wheel itself, on the back of the housing of the steering wheel, in the rubber portion, you'll see a little circle right here. It's already broken by us, um, where you are supposed to put a thin tool through this little hole to be able to leverage the spring that holds the airbag. Um, the spring that holds the airbag is actually on the faceplate on the inner portion of the wheel. So we're gonna remove this, put this wheel down. Here on this faceplate, you'll be poking through the housing of the steering wheel right here. And what that does is, on the back of that plate that is on your OEM steering wheel, there's a little spring mechanism which you will push through with whatever it is that you're using. I'm using a thin uh, Allen key and uh, I'm just pushing it in like that from both sides. It unclips the airbag and you'll be able to pull that off and uh, we'll go from there. Once you've found the contact point where you're gonna put the Allen key through, you should be able to feel some resistance as you're moving it in and out. And if you're moving it the right way, you'll be able to simply see that the airbag actually unclipped on one side, on this one's still good, but here it has range of motion. So we've unclipped this side, we're gonna repeat that process from the other side and take the airbag right out. So we've unclipped both sides, the airbag is now free to come out. What you'll notice is, as you look at the back of it, the wires are twisted together and this is done for a reason. You're gonna to remember to do this when you're reinstalling your airbag. If you leave the wires completely untwisted and try to put the steering wheel on, you run the risk of squashing some wires against the metal edge where it's supposed to go through in the center. So that's why it was twisted to begin with by the factory and you're gonna put it on the same way. So while uninstalling it, you can obviously untwist it, give yourself a little bit more leverage. And here we're gonna unclip the back pins on the airbag like we do on every single install. A flathead screwdriver should take care of what you need to do here. These two pins just pop right off when you put the flathead under the orange part and push up unclipped. One is basically out. And the second one, same thing. A screwdriver under, unclipped. Both of these are unclipped and should, you should be able to just pull them out. For the third wire, that's your ground, the black one. This one you just wanna pull off. You could wiggle it off. There's a little tab holding it a little bit tighter onto the metal part, but just like wiggling it off should get it off as well. Boom, here we go. Here we, here we go. So your airbag is now out. The pins are disconnected. We now have access to the center nut holding the steering wheel in place. Once we unscrew this one, steering wheel comes right off the car. So we've removed and disconnected the airbag. Now there's one more pin to disconnect before we pull the steering wheel off and unscrew the center nut. That pin is actually right in there. So we're just gonna use a flathead screwdriver 
to depress this little tab over there. Hopefully you see it. Here I'm pressing on it with a flathead. And with your other hand, you're just gonna pull it out. And once it pops out, these are all the electronics that you want it to disconnect before untightening the center nut. So like we were saying prior, a T55 takes care of it over here. It's gonna be a little bit of resistance. You might need to have a second person hold the wheel. We just disconnected it before, so it's a little easier for myself. But you're gonna, uh, you know, obviously turn it counterclockwise like anything that you're unscrewing. And there we go. Center nut is out. We'll just remove that nut. That's it. And that's it. Your steering wheel is now free to come off the column. Make sure you take it off uh, slowly and carefully. You may need to wiggle side to side to loosen it up if it's really sitting hard on that thread. And also you'd never want to pull a steering wheel off in a very brash or abrupt fashion because there's obviously electronics like the clock spring behind it that you don't want to damage as you're removing it. So small thing to mention as you're pulling the steering wheel off, these black wires on your right, they're actually part of the wheel assembly. They're going to stay on the wheel. These two yellow ones, you want to make sure there's clearance for they're not entangled with the black ones when you're pulling it off. You want to make sure that when you pull off your wheel, you do it gently, you jiggle it side to side to make sure that it's sliding down the threads lightly and you're not just brute forcing it. Uh, and as you're removing it, you obviously want to make sure that these yellow wires are not entangled so you don't pull out your clock spring. That's something you definitely don't want to do. So gently and slowly remove that. Steering wheel starts to come off and make sure those yellow wires come through the connector hole that we just disconnected. You could even just hold your clock spring so as to make sure you're not pulling anything off. And here comes one connector. Here comes the second one. That's it, your clock spring is intact. Your steering wheel's off the car. And we can now transfer over your paddles if you didn't buy separate paddles and your trim if you didn't buy a separate trim as part of your steering wheel. So in this portion, we're gonna remove the original paddles and the original trim in case you need to transfer that over depending on how you spec'd out or purchased your steering wheel. Uh, we're going to remove this faceplate and then we're going to remove the connectors, the uh, four bolts that hold the paddles. So for that you'll need a T20 Torx bit as well as a T30 Torx bit and probably a wrench with a little bit of an extension because we need to get deeper in here without damaging and scratching the face of your wheel. So we've unscrewed these three bolts. These are the T30s. As soon as they're loose, you'll be able to just pop these out. One, two, and three. And then that faceplate that we talked about in the beginning to get the airbag disconnected, it'll come right out. Here's the faceplate with the springs. The paddles are actually just held on by four of these T20 bolts here. We're gonna unscrew all four of these. One, two, three, and four. Once these four are out, your paddles will just fall off the wheel and you'll have them separate, ready to transfer over to your new one. Okay, we've removed the paddles. Now it's all that's left to transfer over, if you are transferring that over, is the center trim, this piece right here. That is only held on by three T20 screws in the back over here. Once you pop these off, then the trim comes off. We've unscrewed the bolts in the back, on the sides and on the bottom. Now this faceplate is ready to come out. While you're removing it, make sure that you know where the contact points are. They're up in here to the right and on the symmetrical side to the left. So when you're pulling off this trim, here it's already off, you'll see that these pins are actually seated in this thick rubber piece. So if you tug it one side too hard, you could end up breaking this trim as it is a little bit on the flexible side. So make sure you're tugging uh, either on both sides together or somebody's helping you out while you're pulling it out and uh, it should come off just like this. The reassembly of your new steering wheel, depending on what you're transferring over onto it, is just the reverse process of taking off all the parts we showed you off of the original. Once it's all assembled and back together looking nice, you're ready to go back to the car and put it on the car. So, we've put the steering wheel back on the car. When you're putting it on, make sure that you align the clock spring with the opening on the steering wheel so that that connector, this one that you disconnected prior, uh, lines up with a hole where it's supposed to go, as well as there will be a guide pin making sure that your uh, clock spring is entering the steering wheel assembly at the right angle. All you have to make sure is that the notch uh, on the steering wheel is aligned with your uh, original notch 
on the uh, steering column. So from here onward, it's a pretty straightforward process. We're gonna bolt up the center nut as we did before. Make sure you torque it to spec. Make sure you reconnect your um, uh, clock spring pin right here. And then the three pins, the three connectors, the ground and the two airbag connectors from the airbag go back on. We'll put the airbag on and uh, we're ready to power up the car, connect the battery and uh, take it for a test spin. So a quick mention about this faceplate right here. I know initially we took it off, we took the connector out, took the steering wheel off, then removed the faceplate right before disassembling the wheel, removing paddles and trim. If you're having a, a hard time unplugging the clock spring connector, it's actually hidden behind this faceplate. So if your fingers are not getting in there, you just can't seem to pop it out. You are at the liberty to just unscrew these two screws, take off the faceplate and then have better access to this clock, clock spring uh, pin itself. However, it's not necessary as you saw before, we disconnected it with it and I just managed to connect it with it again. It's just a little bit of a uh, small hand work. So as you remember, you reconnected all your wires. You wanna make sure none of these cables get stuck or caught anywhere in here while you're sandwiching in the airbag. You wanna give it a spin, make sure the wires are twisted up nicely, just like they were from the factory. And now while you're guiding it in, just take a look, feel with your fingers that you're not squashing that anywhere. Align it nicely and pop the airbag back in. That's it. Your assembly of the steering wheel and the airbag is finished up. We can now reconnect the battery and uh, go for a test drive. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed, you know, seeing how this process works for the McLaren. And uh, if you're interested in a steering wheel build or need something for your McLaren or any other of your cars, give us a shout on Instagram under Charisma Design. This was Kirill. Thank you for watching and uh, see you guys in the next one.